If you're Wake Forest, you can't help but wonder what could have been. The Demon Deacons went 8-5 in 2019, but started 7-1 before the injury bug hit and they finished 1-4. So now the question is, with tons of key losses, can Dave Clawson get his squad to their fifth straight bowl game? Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, the best kept secret in college football. Today, bringing you our 2020 Wake Forest Demon Deacons college football predictions. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share these videos as we continue to predict not just every team in the ACC, but every single Power 5 team in the country. Also, make sure to check out everything in the description below for exclusive content on our website, thegridironexpert.com, and follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So the biggest off-season news in the country this year was that Jamie Newman left Wake Forest to go play quarterback at Georgia. So that's obviously a huge loss right there for this Demon Deacon squad, using a talent, losing a talented dual-threat quarterback in Jamie Newman. The Demon Deacons returned just three starters offensively from a squad that scored nearly 32 points per game last year. But if I'm Wake Forest, I'm not freaking out too much. Yes, we lose Jamie Newman. Yes, we lose our running back and Cade Carney. Yes, we lose our 1,000-yard receiver and Kendall Hinton and Scotty Washington. But the best position, the biggest position on offense is quarterback. And the Demon Deacons have a very capable one in Sam Hartman, who was their starter back in 2018 before he, unfortunately, got hit with an injury. So you have an experienced quarterback in Sam Hartman, and you've got arguably the best wide receiver in the ACC, or at least one of them, in Sage Surratt, 1,001 receiving yards last year and 11 touchdowns before he went down with an injury against Virginia Tech. So not many starters returning offensively, but you've got a dangerous quarterback and a dangerous wide receiver that will be able to move the ball and score some points. Defensively, that is going to be the strength for the Demon Deacons and Dave Clawson. They return nine starters, but they've got to improve. That's why that's so good they have so much experience. They allowed nearly 30 points per game last year but returned Carlos Basham along the defensive line, second in the ACC last year with 10 sacks, and their secondary is the only cause of concern if I'm Wake Forest. They would have the 101st ranked pass defense in the country last year. That's not good, especially when you're going up against good quarterbacks like Trevor Lawrence, Mikael Cunningham, Zach Thomas, Ian Book, De'Eric King, and so forth and so on. Defense might carry the Demon Deacons this year, but the biggest thing is going to determine whether they have a fantastic year like 2019 or a mediocre year is their health. They have to stay healthy. If they get hit with an injury bug yet again, that bowl streak may come to an end. So we take a look at their schedule here. They open up the season on the road at Old Dominion. Certainly a game they cannot overlook. But the Monarchs did go 1-11 last year, and they're dealing with a new head coach in Ricky Rain. So, of course, going on the road to these group of five schools is never easy because this is their Super Bowl. When you get to host a big Power 5 team, that's a huge deal. But there's so much uncertainty going on within the Old Dominion football program right now. I think Wake Forest gets a season opening win. A great way to get Sam Hartman back on his feet, and a great way to test this defense as well. They then host Appalachian State. This is a game that's really going to test Wake Forest's defense. This is a game that is really a trap game for Wake Forest. You don't want to see them lose to the Mountaineers. But they very well could. Because Sean Clark's squad now went 13-1 last year. And they're led by their quarterback in Zach Thomas that has nine starters returning offensively. This App State team knows how to move the ball. They have a lot of speed. They know how to score points. And if the defense isn't up to par in Week 2, it's a very well good chance they might not be, App State will take advantage of that and maybe pull off an upset like they did last year when they beat North Carolina on the road and South Carolina on the road. 
But I think Dave Clawson has his troops ready. I genuinely do. I think the defense does take a step forward. I think Carlos Basham and that defensive line are able to create just enough pressure on Zach Thomas to disrupt him enough that Wake Forest escapes with a very narrow victory over the Mountaineers. They are now 3-0 as we give them the win over Villanova as well. To conclude September, they take on Notre Dame, this game being played in Charlotte. Now, of course, Notre Dame returns one of the best quarterbacks in the country as well in Ian Book. But his problem is that he doesn't have much chemistry with his new pass catchers. He loses his top three pass catchers from last year. Chase Claypool, uh, Cole Komet, you've got Chris Fink. All of them are gone. So it's going to really be interesting to see how quickly Ian Book builds that chemistry with his wide receivers, how strong the running game maybe he is for Notre Dame, because they kind of went to that route last year, because they do have a very strong offensive line. That's going to be the key here, is I think Notre Dame's offensive line has enough to shut down that Wake Forest pass rush, and I think Ian Book is going to be able to exploit some big weaknesses within the Wake Forest secondary. I like the Fighting Irish to get the win here, which will give the Demon Deacons their first loss of the season. So they drop to 3-1, and one, going into the majority of ACC play. Actually, not the majority, all of ACC play. Kicks off in the beginning of October with Duke. Last year, Wake Forest defeated the Blue Devils 39-27. It was kind of a back-and-forth game. You really have to give David Cutcliffe and the Blue Devils credit for the fight they gave a very talented Wake Forest team, even though they were still battling some injuries. But I look at that game last year. It was a 12-point victory, and I really feel that that game was a lot closer than the score indicates. Duke now adds the transfer quarterback in Chase Bryce over from Clemson. And this was a Duke team that was just a few plays away from going bowling last year. With their very, very strong secondary, I think Duke pulls off the upset at home and gets a little bit of revenge over the Demon Deacons. I know it's not what you want to hear. I know it's not what Demon Deacon fans want to hear. But I think they drop back-to-back games to Notre Dame and a Duke team that will be borderline bowl eligible this year. Anywhere between five and seven wins, I feel like. But I do think that one of those wins comes at home against Wake Forest. They then return home Upset after back-to-back losses on a Friday night to take on Miami. And look, if you're a road team playing on a Friday night, you need to be scared. Because there's just something about those Friday night games that always sparks some madness. we got Pac-12 after dark, and we've got Friday night madness. And I think you see a monster upset here as the Demon Deacons upset Miami. They draw them out of the Coastal this year, a team that will improve in year two under Manny Diaz. Huge that they got De'Eric King, the transfer quarterback from Houston. But their offensive line still has a lot of questions. Should be much improved. But if they're not fully up to par, De'Eric King is going to be scrambling for his life on a Friday night in Winston-Salem. I definitely like Gregory Rousseau as well, something that's going to really test Wake Forest offensive line. So it's going to be a game that might be one of the trenches. But right now, I think Wake Forest slightly owns that wide receiver edge with Sage Surratt. And I think Wake Forest and Dave Clawson pull off a monumental upset over a very good Miami team Friday night, October 9th, to snap that two-game losing skid and improve to 4-2. and two. And when you're looking at their schedule here, guys, again... The biggest stretch of their season comes right here. Notre Dame, Duke, Miami, Florida State. Those are four huge games that could really alter the course of this season. If Wake Forest does better than expected in those four games, it could be a very, very special season. If they split them, not too bad. If they lose all of them, they might not even be going bowling because they still have to play Clemson and Louisville. We think they lose here to Florida State, so we have them going 1-3 and three in what we think is the biggest stretch of their season. One and three in that biggest stretch. Excuse that L there. But Florida State, last year, Wake Forest defeated 22-20. to They kicked five field goals, only scored one touchdown. You're lucky to win a game if that's the case. Because most teams are able to score touchdowns. Most teams are able to move the ball a little bit better. Credit to Wake Forest's defense last year, but that's not going to be the case this year. Florida State's offense was just abysmal under Willie Taggart, and now they bring in a brilliant offensive mind in Mike Norvell to kind of right that shit. The game's in Tallahassee. 
Florida State will absolutely be able to move the ball better with some improved quarterback play. Their defense returns 10 starters from last year's squad. I just don't th think the Demon Deacons can go on the road and pull off this upset. So they lose here, 1-3 in the big stretch. Going into their bye week, they're sitting at 4-3 and three right now, just two wins away from bowl eligibility. They come on the road at North Carolina State, so right after a bye week, to take on a Wolfpack squad they defeated by 34 last year, 44-10. to 10. North Carolina State under Dave Doran only averaged 22.1 points per game last year. Their defense allowed 30.1 points per game. It's really, really bad. You're not going to win many games when you do that. And unfortunately, the Wolfpack only returned four starters defensively versus Wake Forest's nine. And unlike Wake Forest, which still has only three returning starters offensively, NC State still has some questions offensively. Even though they return eight starters, will Devin Leary pan out? Will he continue to improve? Will the running game be up to par? So many questions still surrounding NC State this year as they go through still a small rebuilding process. Off a week of rest, Dave, uh, Dave Clawson has his team ready to go. They beat NC State, and they do beat Syracuse at home. A Syracuse team that beat Wake Forest last year 39-30 to in overtime. That's kind of a little revenge game in my mind. Game went to overtime, and you ask, how do you win a game by nine in overtime? Well, it's because Syracuse stripped the ball and returned it at the very end of the game when they were up 33-30. to So Wake Forest had a chance to win that game, blew it at the end. They get revenge over a Syracuse team that has major offensive line issues and loses a lot defensively. You look here, right now they've already clinched bowl eligibility. So boom, they're six in what? Three? Six and three. Things are looking good. But they've got a tough two-game stretch here against Louisville and Clemson. We think they drop both. The Louisville game, it's on the road against one of the best offenses in the ACC. Mikhail Cunningham, Tutu Atwell, Des Fitzpatrick, J.B. on Hawkins. It's just going to be too much for the Wake Forest defense to handle, even though Louisville's defense will struggle as well. Keep in mind, last year, Louisville came into Winston-Salem, won that game 62-59. to Absolute thriller, absolute shootout. Wake Forest was 6-0 and at the time. So, while you know the Demon Deacons want to get revenge over the Cardinals, the Cardinals are trending up big time in year two under Scott Satterfield, and I don't see them giving up this one at home. So they lose here, and I think the Clemson game speaks for itself as they are arguably one of the best teams in the entire country, are the heavy favorites to win the ACC yet again, and Wake Forest fell to them 52-3 to last year. Just don't, don't really have to explain much on that one. They close out the season against Boston College. This will be the difference between a 6-6 six and six season or a 7-5 and five season. Wake Forest won the game 27-24 to last year over the Eagles, and that was a better Boston College team than we're going to see this year. Because now they bring in Jeff Hafley, so they've got a brand new head coach. They have questions at the quarterback position. A.J. Dillon is gone, so they're going to have to rely heavily on David Bailey. And the defense, yes, returned seven starters, but they weren't all that great last year. I think David Bailey slowly but surely builds this team up. Could be a bold team as soon as next year. But they're not going to come on the road and beat Wake Forest. So the Demon Deacons get a win over a struggling Boston College team, at least one we believe will struggle mightily, and finish 2020 at 7-5. and five. And if I'm a Demon Deacon fan, I am thrilled with this, because guess what? You're going to your fifth straight bowl game. There was a moment in time many years ago where no one thought that was possible. So the Demon Deacons going to their fifth straight bowl game under Dave Clawson, they compete very well in their losses. I think they hang in there against Louisville. I think they hang in there against Notre Dame and Duke as well. But at the end of the day, they have a chance at yet another eight-win season. Once again, something that many thought was not possible many years ago. So Dave Clawson continuing to do a great job in Winston-Salem. And Wake Forest still, despite the losses offensively, still a very dangerous team to watch out for in the ACC. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share these videos. Share all of our prediction videos, some of the best analysis and predictions in the entire country. Also, make sure to check out everything down in the description below. 
exclusive content on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for more coverage that we do here. So you certainly don't want to miss any of that. And once again, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert. Oh,